Hello, I'm Simon Whistler. You're watching Top 10's Net, and in the video today, we're looking at the top 10 Japanese obsessions you won't believe. When you ask Westerners about Japan, odds are they'll come up with some peculiar stereotypes, generally involving things like Sailor Moon and maybe, well, okay, probably some tentacles. Of course, not every stereotype is true, though. There are a lot of normal aspects to Japanese culture, and Japan in general is home to some incredible history and one of the most technologically advanced and financially robust populations in the world. Then again, there's a reason Westerners look a little sideways at the Japanese sometimes, and we have a feeling you might too once you've finished with this video. Just before we get started, I will say that if I screw up any of the Japanese pronunciations, I'm sorry. I try to look up the ones I can. Sometimes they're just not there. So uh, with that in mind, let's get started. Number 10. Yaiba. Protruding tooth. Your average American spends about $685 on dental care. Not so surprising as the American media constantly reminds people about oral hygiene with celebrities flaunting their expensive Hollywood smiles. Whereas we might go to the dentist to straighten crooked teeth, some Japanese women are embracing their crowded dentures. Called yaiba, women display their dental imperfections proudly, with some even seeking professional help to create the look. There's a lot of different explanations as to why the yaiba craze has become so successful in Japan. Some suggest that it captures girl's youth. Others argue it's just another way that women change their appearance to conform to male standards. While all of this might be enough to make a brace-wearing teenager sigh in despair, in reality, yaiba is a mostly harmless fashion trend that can be reversed as styles change. In fact, though yaiba may appeal to the younger crowd, older women are electing to get treatment to fix those imperfect teeth once and for all. Number 9. Zentai – Full Body Suits a zentai suit, zentai meaning whole or entire in Japanese, is a skin-tight item of clothing that is usually associated with superheroes or an athlete's uniform. All in all, that seems sensible and isn't the sort of thing that people would think twice over. However, plunge a little deeper and you find a group of enthusiasts with different motives. For some, these suits offer a sense of anonymity, so often missing from their everyday lives. For others, it helps them find a place in society by hiding their outward appearance. There's even a sexual element to some who wear zentai suits suits, with one fan remarking how he liked to be touched and stroked by others. This is one trend that is branching out of Japan into the West. The Zentai Project Group, which is based in Britain, holds occasional walkouts where members go out in public taking pictures with amused tourists. So now you know that that guy walking down the street isn't just doing a bad imitation of Spider-Man, he's a full-blown Zentai suit practitioner. Number 8. Eyeball Licking Aside from sounding incredibly unhygienic, eyeball licking is a supposed craze practiced in Japanese schools. Unusual, at best, examples of this eccentric trend can be found on YouTube, in comic books, and even in music videos. You might prefer a handshake, but some Japanese school children view eyeball licking as a sign of intimacy. Whether all of this is fact or fiction is a matter of debate. A Japanese website says that it's a problem with a full third of a classroom of 12-year-olds admitting to have given it a go. One teacher reported an increasing number of students covering their infections by wearing eye patches. Tokyo-based writer Mark Schreiber, on the other hand, disagrees. Schreiber contacted two ophthalmological associations, an ophthalmologist, a professor, and an organization of school clinicians, all of whom had never heard of the practice. This might be one we would like to think of as an urban myth. After all, health experts have been quick to advise against the dangers of licking eyeballs. Styles, conjunctivitis, ruptures to the cornea, ocular chlamydia, and in other extreme cases, blindness, are some of the things you can look forward to. Either way, it does seem unlikely that this trend will spread across the Pacific. Number 7. 1873, the year of the rabbit. Rabbits, cute, furry, cuddly, and nowhere to be seen on the Japanese islands before 1873. When rabbits were imported as curiosities, the Japanese people went crazy for the creature. A rabbit back then could fetch amazing prices, with a single rabbit sometimes going for as much as $1,000, but $400 to $500 being a regular occurrence. The year 1874 saw the government put a capitation tax on rabbits. Prices fell from dollars to cents, and for rabbit gamblers, the good times were over. It's important to stress that some people took this craze very seriously. One man spent everything he had on two rabbits, only for them to die soon after. His daughter, taking pity on her father, sold herself to a brothel. With the money earned, she bought two more rabbits that also went on to die. Having had enough, the man committed suicide, and his daughter followed his example. This story baffled Australia's The Launceston Examiner so much that they remarked, Life is apparently cheap in Japan since the value of two human lives seems to be equal that of four rabbits. Number 6. Biojaku 
New fashion trends occur on an almost yearly basis in Japan. Japanese fashion is well known in the West, with some trying to mimic the latest Tokyo trends. One of the more obscure fashion crazes in recent years is Biojaku, or sickly face in English. Biojaku can trace its origins back to an April issue of Renzuki, a Japanese fashion magazine. Since then, whether Biojaku is a good or bad thing has been a subject of much curiosity in the Japanese media. According to Japanese schoolgirls, the Biojaku look involves pale skin, worried brows, and slightly flushed cheeks and lips. This is not to suggest that this craze is confined to schools, though. Maishi Raishi, Kana Hashimoto, and AMO are all celebrities known for this look. So why are women adopting this style? Well, it's been suggested that the look produces an unapproachable damsel-in-distress message that asks people to protect them. Number 5. Japan's Bagel Heads for most people, all body modification means is getting your ears pierced or the odd tattoo. More extreme body modification practices such as eye tattoos are part of a fringe community which exists throughout the world. Japan, however, manages to take this unconventional subculture and to add a unique twist. The bagel head look is achieved by injecting saline into the forehead while pressing your thumb down. Starting as long ago as 1999, the trend is still going strong and is surprisingly one of the tamer practices on the scene. For those that want to pursue something more outrageous, ear pointing, navel removal, and amputation are all viable options. You might be wondering what any of those last three entail. Well, ear pointing involves sharpening your ears to look like a cat, navel removal is literally the removal of the navel from the body, and amputation is, well, exactly what it sounds like, with one practitioner suggesting the loss of a couple of fingers. If you decide you would rather just stick to injecting saline into your head than prepare to spend some serious money. The bagel head look lasts for 24 hours, so you'll need to keep on forking out that hard-earned cash on saline to keep the effect up. There is some good news for the vein, though. The skin doesn't sag, no matter how many times you do it. Number 4. The Toilet Paper Craze of 1973 In 1973, Japan was almost caught with its pants down when toilet paper became the year's must-have item. An oil crisis and fears of a paper shortage led Japanese nationals to grab any paper they could get their hands on, whether it be toilet paper, facial tissues, disposable diapers, or sanitary napkins. One man managed to get a hold of a thousand rolls of toilet paper, which is enough to last five years, provided his family used four rolls a week. At the time, Japan imported oil to maintain a modern lifestyle. When the 19 1973 war in the Middle East threatened Japan's supply of inexpensive oil, many people panicked with demands for basic consumer items, raising prices exponentially. In some parts of the country, the price of a roll of toilet paper more than doubled within a couple of weeks. It got so bad that the people stole toilet paper from public buildings just to keep up supplies. This isn't something that Japan just laughs off lightly. In 2014, the government, fearing another scare, rolled out a public awareness campaign encouraging the stockpile of toilet paper and even the sale of specially packaged emergency use toilet tissue. One more reason not to grumble the next time you reach out to an empty holder. Number 3. Hamaketsu – Hamster Bottoms Hamaketsu is best described as a surreal mixture of the Japanese words for hamster and bottom. Bizarrely, more than 40,000 copies of photo books dedicated to hamster bottoms have been sold. A Facebook page devoted to Hamaketsu has thousands of fans uploading hundreds of pictures. To get an even bigger picture of how popular hamster butts are in Japan, we need to look no further than the first book on the subject. This book featured 72 shots of photogenic hamsters. It was so popular that it outsold its initial 7,000 copies, forcing a re prints. It's been said that this is just another development of another aspect of Japanese culture known as kawaii, meaning cute or adorable in English. When asked about the trend, Takeshi Takahashi, spokesman at Hamaketsu's publishers Basilico, explained, The great thing about Hamaketsu is that it's delightfully cute. I can't stop smiling when I see these butts. Number 2. Sea Bunnies a genus of sea slugs native to the Pacific Ocean and found in the waters north of Japan, these marine gastropods have become a Japanese internet phenomenon. Named sea bunnies for their rabbit-like appearance, some can grow up to 8 inches, with coats and ears that some find cute. The fur-like coat is the result of bunches of tiny rods that cover the animal's back. Arranged around knobs that are occasionally black, this gives the sea bunny its speckled appearance. Its ears are actually two antenna-like formations that are most likely sensory organs. Known under the scientific name rhinophores, they are used to sense chemicals in the water that help sea bunnies locate food and mates. Sea bunnies can relax when it comes to natural predators as they're very toxic, so although you're safe to enjoy them from a distance, touching them seems like a bad idea. Thankfully, most people are content to just look at pictures. A web page dedicated to the creatures has been shared nearly 10,000 times. Number 1. Kanchio 
Cancio is a popular prank where children sneak up on an unsuspecting victim only to poke one another with pointed fingers in the behind, yelling Cancio at their hapless opponents. Aside from traumatizing a few English teachers, the prank is generally well received. Cancio isn't necessarily encouraged in Japan, but children are seldom scolded for it. A popular source of ridicule online, there are sites providing survival guides on how to protect your posterior from wayward children. Common throughout Japan, Cancio is a classic example of how two cultures can be so different. Whereas it would likely spurn allegations of sexual abuse in the West, Kenchio is seen as mostly harmless fun in Japan. It's a trend that children typically grow out of as they get older. Now, we may have a lot in common with the Japanese, but there are some trends in Japan that manage to make even the most well-traveled gasp in amazement. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below and don't forget to subscribe for brand new videos just like this every day of the week. Also over there on the right, a couple of other videos that you might enjoy if you enjoyed this one. And thank you for watching.